were Kurds and there were Turks. And they were fighting not for their homeland, but for the idea of their homeland. And the idea that everyone there deserved to live in peace and have their freedom. And they were fighting against Daesh, which, for the many things that can be said, the least we can say is they are potentially the greatest evil of our generation. And Michael of Old Robin, and Haval Zana, a young German who had been there for two months and who was following Michael around, and several Arabs from the very village of Aramia and Kurds were there when they were airstruck by Turkish airplanes after liberating the village from ISIS. This was a fear we all had if you were a foreigner in Java. But it just had to happen to the best of us. To paraphrase Hemingway, some people have so much bravery that the world has no choice but to kill them. And in the words of Josh Walker, who was there on the roof of the building that got airstruck that night, Michael was the best of us, as they always are. He was never the bad person. He's never the person who slacks off of their duty, who you don't trust, who doesn't make you laugh, who dies. It is the kind and the brave without fail, that we lose. But that does not mean it was wasted by any means. We'll set Harama free before we're through, but Arama is free. The YPG flag and the flag of the Man Beach Military Council flies over that village still, despite the fact that the Turkish army is a mere two kilometers away despite the fact that the forces of the regime are just a kilometer away. The village has been airstruck, it has been bombed, and it has been mined, but it is still there. <coughs> and Rojava is still there. And all the people inside of Rojava are still there. And when Mike first went there, as you can tell by the wonderful Kurdish people who are here, the wonderful Kurdish people who are over there, it was a Kurdish issue. But by the time Michael died, it was much more than that. He died alongside Kurds, Arabs, Turks, Assyrians, the people of that land. And he is not the first friend I have lost. He was not the last friend I have lost, and he will not be the last friend I lose. And that weighs really heavy on me. So that does it, I think, everyone who came back. What I'm trying to say in this roundabout way is he was at his best there. I know none of you here knew Michael, the expert fry maker of Rojava, but that was his best self. That was where he belonged and where he needed to be for himself and for the people there. Because you can never take away the feeling you get when you look at a 60-year-old Kurdish man who probably doesn't even have citizenship in his country, glance across the street and see someone from America and someone from Germany speaking his language. You cannot take away the look on the face of a nine-year-old Arab girl when she sees the Yepige walking side by side with the Yepige. Those things are worth fighting for.
And at the end of the day, the world breaks everyone. Afterwards, some are strong in the broken places. But those who can't break, it kills. It kills the brave, the kind, and the nice. And if you are none of these, it'll kill you too. But there will be no special worry about it. So remember the kind, and the brave, and the nice. Because that's what Michael was. And that's what he always will be. Nothing will ever take that away from him. Nothing will ever take that away from me, the people he fought with, who've also died, or any of the people whose village he helped liberate that night, and be able to go home to their village, and are in that village today, because of the sacrifice he made. That's really all I have to say. Biji Shuresh. Thank <laughs> you.